I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm telling you, we got some stuff for you this week. Strange and geeky stuff. I have my tablet in hand, and that means that I can scroll. Don't you love the scrolling? I can scroll through all kinds of stuff here. And we can start the netcast, which, by the way, I almost forgot to tell you, the netcast, this netcast, drbill.tv, otherwise known as Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Now, some of you may have noticed that I look rather red. <laughs> in recent netcasts. That's because I'm using light that is not balanced for daylight. You say I don't care. Well, I do. So I'm going to go get some light bulbs eventually that are balanced for daylight and will therefore have, it will, you know, I don't mind having a nice red glow about me. <laughs> but uh, I've had a few people say you look embarrassed all the time. It's not me. It's the lights. <laughs> if I had other kinds of lights, I'd look blue. So I guess pink is better, but it's still too pink. So I need balanced light. See, the whole problem with net casting, video casting, is that you have to get everything just so perfect. Well, if you're me. So it's a it's an ongoing it's a work in progress, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. Alright, let's go into the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, as it says right here, is drbill.tv. D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV. TV, of course, standing for the fact that this is a multimedia video network broadcast. Broadcast being an interesting term, and we'll talk about that later. I was about to get pulled off into something, but I'm going to wait till later. I'm pacing myself. Yes. All right, stupid user tricks. <laughs> You've heard of on uh, you know the Tonight Show they talk about stupid pet tricks or whatever. Well, anyway, <laughs> stupid user tricks are things users do that make you go, what? Anyway, this was an article that I found, and I just couldn't help it. These are actual, actual things that were uh, phoned in to telephone support on an IT help desk. Now, think with me <laughs> a moment that these are people who are sitting out there at work. Yes. And they're calling the IT help desk. Now, IT help desks help you with your computers. You know what I'm saying? And your work-related things. So, here are some of the questions that users called in with. How do I clean cat hair out of my computer fan? Well, that's at least a computer question. But how many of you have cats at work? Now, I have a cat here. Yes, Tiger. She's around here somewhere. I think she may even be in the chair right over there. She likes to be around people when they're doing odd things, and this is about as odd as it gets. So, anyway, so I can understand the question, but it work? What? Okay. How do I remove a sesame seed from the keyboard? Now, there's a technical question for you. I would say lick it out, but that would be gross. Blah. Okay. <laughs> you got to wonder if the help desk people aren't sitting there going, I'd really like to tell you some of these things, but I've got to be nice because I'm a professional. 
Okay. I need help drilling holes in the wall. What? <laughs> you may have holes in your head, but no. Anyway, uh, can you come over and plug in this cord for me? Plug in your own cord. I mean, these are things I'd like to say, but I wouldn't if I was actually on the help desk. <laughs> or I'd lose my job. Anyway, I need you to install a video monitoring system. Yes. Can I turn on the coffee pot with my computer? Well, here's the answer to that. You can do anything with a computer if you're smart enough. So, no, you can't turn on. Hey, no, I'm being mean now. I don't mean to be mean. I dropped my phone in the toilet. What should I do? First, step one, don't flush. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. <laughs> I want to download software to change an audio file to video. Now there's a nice trick. We were talking earlier about video being hard. Just an interesting idea there. Now here's the one I really like. You're at work. You call the help desk and you ask them, how do I pirate software? What? Anyway, help desk professionals are known for lending a hand even if a request falls outside their job description, and these employ but these employees took the concept too far. So here's a nice help desk person trying to be helpful, and they call up and says, we need you to fix the microwave in the lunchroom. What? Can you recommend a good dry cleaner? <laughs> Can you help me fix my chair? Can you help us get money out of the vending machine? Now there's something that everybody should really know. I can't find my packages online. Can you help me? Try looking at the door where the UPS guy leaves it. <laughs> anyway, that's, you know, never mind. Um, can you fix my toilet? Goes back to the guy who's trying to flush. Never mind. My car's cup holder is broken. Can you fix it? <laughs> Can you help me repair a washing machine? <laughs> now that's got a lot to do with IT, right? Where can I find a video of Elvis Presley online? Now this is a question that actually I would like to answer for you right now. Go online. Go to the address bar. That's the little bar at the top of the page. Type in google.com. G-O-O-G-L-E.com. I'll put it right here. When Google comes up, there's a little bar there, uh, like where you type stuff. Type in Elvis Presley video and click the button. You get a list of Elvis Presley videos. How cool is that? Now, <laughs> see if I was a help desk guy, I could answer this question. <laughs> the thing is, what does that have to do with work? Why would you call at work and say, how do I find an Elvis Presley video? But even so, this question comes up, believe it or not. I'm trying to decide whether I should tell this or not. <laughs> okay, let's put it this way. <laughs> I'm being very politically correct here. There once was someone who worked at an IT department who shall remain nameless. This person was constantly being asked questions of a technical nature because people respected this person's technical expertise, and that's good. And the questions tended to be fairly simple. And the first question this technical person would ask the individual is, have you Googled it first before you came and asked? No. Most of the time the answer is no. They want the individual in question to be their font of information. 
Now, what does the individual in this particular IT department somewhere in the universe, what do they do? They, they go on their computer and they Google it. And then turn to the person in this fictional IT department and say, they say something along the lines of, well, here's a nice article. <laughs> I will send you the link. <laughs> Google things. That's what the universal mind of the cosmos is now, is Google. Now I know some people use Bing. Bing! To each his own, okay? I just won't go any further than that. All right. Finally, here's a few more, and then we'll move on. These are just too good. I'd like to download the entire internet so I can take it with me. What? Okay, the internet. now I gotta admit that former Senator Ted Stevens once said that it's not his something that you just dump something on. You know, the, the, the worker, the, assistant. It's not a big truck. What? what if you want to call it? Two. Sent him the internet one day. And it took an entire day to get to his email box. Well, it's the entire internet. Come on, give the system a break. Now, what made that particular thing sad is that he, at the time, was the chairman of the committee that controlled the internet connections and things. Doesn't exactly give you warm fuzzies about government. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. How do I start the internet? You push the big green button. <laughs> I'd love to I'd love to have the chance to answer some of these questions. I really would. Anyway. Will you show me how to use the mouse? <laughs> We'll move it around. I, I did hear of a story one time where somebody had a mouse and they thought, well, it's called a mouse, so the little wiry thing must be the tail. So they had the wire where it went toward you. So when they moved the mouse, it would go the wrong direction on the screen. <laughs> okay. And then I heard of another person that used the mouse like a foot pedal. They were apparently used to the old sewing machine, you know what I'm saying? Some of you are going, sewing machine? What's a sewing machine? Never mind. Anyway, my computer won't turn on or off. Helped this person work with them a while and found out the computer was unplugged. You've got to have the wire plugged into the wall for the electricity to flow, you know what I'm saying? How do I send an email? Actually, not a bad question, I guess, if you've never used email. How do I click on different files? Yes. These are all questions we really want to know. Okay, let's move on. Next item. <laughs> Sometimes these are just too funny. Okay, next item. Um, when you run a website... I'm going, you can tell, when I, when I get this tone in my voice, you can tell I'm going to digress into a long explanation. I'll try to keep it short. Though. I really will. Work on it. When you run a website, as I do, drbill.tv, and it's been around for, what? Since June of 2005, after a number of years, links get what we call stale, meaning they don't go anywhere anymore. <laughs> so I, I go back occasionally and try to fix links. And the problem is I've got like 1,800 entries in the blog. That's separate articles, okay? In the process of time, over the years, the netcast, meaning the video netcast, and the podcast, meaning the audio podcast, 
have gotten, some of the links have gotten a little stale. Some of the information has gotten twisted around. Certain formats are no longer available. For instance, I don't put out FLV files anymore. You know, the flash video. Uh, they're now M4V, so you can download the video. It's what we're doing right here. And the audio is MP3, but I also support AUG. As I said when I first introduced it, AUG is not a caveman. <laughs> it's an open source audio format. And supporting open source, I went back and actually retro converted my MP3 audio podcast into AUG format so you'd have a choice between AUG and MP3. Okay, now, I hadn't done it, I didn't start with episode one doing that, so I went back in time and did that. Well, that means i got to add links to all the podcasts, the audio podcasts for AUG, right? So I've gone back and done that before. Well, this was to clean up the video side. So I cleaned up the video netcast. Now, there's a bunch of those. It took a long, long time and a lot of attention to detail. <sighs> but I got it done. So I commemorated it by putting an entry in the blog that says, I just finished a huge cleanup of previously dead links and old info and all, all my old podcasts and netcast postings from episode one all the way through episode 235. This is episode 236. So it's a new one. When I put it out, it'll be correct. Don't worry. Okay. Wow, that was painful. <laughs> it was. But the good news is, is that when you go back to look at all our video netcasts, they are there, as they should be. So here's the links to subscribe. You can subscribe to our video netcast by subscribing at http colon whack whack www.drbill.tv whack category whack doctor dash bill dash netcast whack. Yes, it's a link in the blog. You can go there. You're, you're saying, oh, well, 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 what? <laughs> Never mind. I've also got the link for the audio netcast. I am in an odd mood, but I usually am in an odd mood. It's just those questions put me in an odder mood. <laughs> okay. While we're at it talking about going to the next item, before we do, let's talk about the fact that we have an awesome sponsor in Citrix Systems. Citrix has this tremendous product called GoToMeeting. Now the newest version, latest version, most current version of GoToMeeting is GoToMeeting with HD faces, meaning you have the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I actually got my finger to go around the screen correctly. I'm getting better at it. Anyway, 16 by 9 aspect ratio for your face to be high definition while you're conferencing with GoToMeeting. You can have online meetings. You don't have to jump in a car and drive all the way across the country or fly if I could fly without a plane, that would be different, but you've got to cram yourself into a plane like a cattle car. Give me a break. So, GoToMeeting is the way to go to your meeting with HD faces. And this great deal that's on the screen right here with a special secret word, podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, podcast. If you use that when you go to GoToMeeting, and type in that code word, you'll get 30 days free and 30 days free trial, and you will get credit given to Tech Podcast Network for all the great tech podcast that we're doing out there through Tech Podcast Network. Awesome. So take advantage of that. All right, next item, Linus Torvalds. That's the way he pronounces it, Linus Torvalds. Matter of fact, here it is. This is Linus, Linus, saying Linux. This is how he pronounces it. Hello, this is Linus Torvalds, and I pronounce yes. Linux as Linux. That's right. So, we know how Linus pronounces his name, Linus Torvalds. Linus Torvalds wins the Millennium Technology Prize. Now, the Millennium Technology Prize doesn't have as much publicity as the Nobel Peace Prize, 
But then the people that win the Nobel Peace Prize most of the time really don't do anything to contribute to world peace. They just have a good press agent. Know what I mean? <laughs> but this time, the Millennium Technology Prize is going to someone who truly deserves it. Past winner of the Millennium Technology Prize, for instance, was Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who of course invented the World Wide Web and the concept of hyperlinking. Dude, think of where we would be if it weren't for du Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Wow. Same thing with Linus, Linus Torvalds. Where would we be without him? Because he created the concept known as Linux. Now, a lot of people contributed to it. That's why I say it that way. A lot of people contributed to Linux because it's an open source project. And I've been on board since day one, dude. Dude, I go all the way back. Linus posted in 1991 about Linux, and I've been using it ever since. <laughs> yes. You like the old man voice? You know, it's not my real voice, but I do it fairly well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Anyway, it says here in the article, our friend Stephen J. Vaughn Nichols, who is a writer of great note in the open source world. I tell you, I really like his articles and his information. Anyway, he works now with ZDNet. And he reported that Linus Torvalds, creator of Linux, is winning the equivalent of the Nobel Prize of geekdom. I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I try to be. I try to be hip and cool. And the very fact that I use the term hip and cool means I'm not. So, what are you gonna do? Anyway, it's awesome. I was happy to hear that. Next item: a real-life Doctor Who sonic screwdriver. Dude! Now, I'm, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, have been for a long, long time, and the latest incarnation of Doctor Who is awesome. Just saying. My son, the Game Master, likes it as well, as does my wife, Belinda. We're all big Doctor Who fans. So anyway, you know he has the sonic screwdriver. I don't actually have one handy. We have several laying around, but I just don't have one handy. <laughs> anyway... But his screwdriver does all kinds of cool things. Well, in England, they've actually invented a real, quote, sonic screwdriver. Now, it doesn't look like the sonic screwdriver. I'll put it up here in the corner. Things get reversed when you're staring at a video screen. Anyway, in the corner there, you see the sonic screwdriver as Doctor Who uses it. However, the real quote, real one, is a an invention that they have in the UK, the United Kingdom, which can do all kinds of amazing things. And the whole idea is that it uses an ultrasonic beam to move objects up and down, and the beam features a rotating structure similar to a DNA helix, but with more strands to spin them. In a demonstration, the team managed to levitate and spin a small disc in a tub of water. Cool! But it's more than a magic trick. They want to use it for non-invasive ultrasound surgery, targeted drug delivery, and ultrasonic manipulation of cells. Awesome! However, they do say that they don't plan to contact any inter inter extraterrestrial or interterrestrial life. <laughs> well, after all, Doctor Who went underground and found this whole society of dinosaur people. That's inter-space. Yes, inner space. I don't know. Make it up as I go along. Anyway, next item. One of my friends at work sent me this video link, and it's awesome. It's little tiny quadrotors, which are like like helicopters with four rotors. Quad four. You know what I'm saying? And they go nee, 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 and they fly and you should see this video. If it weren't for copyright issues, I would show you the video right now. As it is, I'll just put up the link here for showing the video on YouTube. Or you can go to the blog, drbill.tv, and watch the video there. That's another good thing to do. Awesome, awesome. Seeing them fly in formation. Dude, oh, it's, you really got to see it. 
Promise me you'll go see it. Please. Okay. Next item. <laughs> Raspberry pie. Pie is in P.I. pie. This is a geek joke. You know, pie. <laughs> Reminds me of a parody movie. It was parody parodying the movie. <laughs> now, I can't remember the name of the movie. It was parodying. It was the one with the flying saucers. And the guy that made the mountain out of potatoes. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Thank you. <laughs> you wonder how I hear these voices. <laughs> Tux, he keeps me straight. See, there's Tux right there. He keeps me straight. Tells me things. Yeah. Okay, so it was a parody of Close Encounters. And it was called Close Encounters of the Nerd Kind. It was a funny little thing. But anyway... There's this guy, very wooden looking actor type guy, and they're looking at pie, and like pie, like a piece of pie. And they, he says, it's a message from the aliens. And the guy comes on screen and says, I used to be a scientist before I was a bad actor. It's pie, <laughs> meaning, 3.14 blah 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 pi 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 it's a geek joke is my point <sighs> boy i'm digressing a lot these days anyway the raspberry pi is a super small inexpensive tv based pc and the picture i've got here if you can see it that picture is actual size. So if you look at the size of my hand next to it, that's actual size the entire computer. See if I can keep the shiny from being a problem. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. So this computer is a 256 meg of RAM, one USB port. This is the A version. There's a Model A and a Model B uh, with no ethernet connection. Model B has 256 meg of RAM, two USB ports, and an Ethernet port, which you pretty much would need to have. The Model B is the one to go with. You know what I'm saying? It's 35 bucks, the Model B is. 35 bucks. 35 bucks for an, a whole computer on a board, a little bitty board about the size of a credit card. Now, you plug it into your HDMI TV or screen, whatever, and you plug in a USB keyboard and mouse. And it comes with a copy of Fedora Linux burned into the EEPROM. Dude. So you can basically do cool geeky stuff using your TV set. I want one to play with. 35 bucks, dude. You could, you could do, I see, I, <laughs> I had a guy at work, he says, what are you going to do with it? Well use it you know do stuff with it have it come up on the screen and go look i got fedora linux on my tv screen <laughs> yeah yeah okay so so we'll come up with uses for it <laughs> i'm sure you could probably put myth tv on it and do like you know ddr-ish things if you could come up with a way to store the data Maybe plug in a USB drive. I don't know. The coolness of it alone makes it worthwhile. Anyway, I thought it was awesome. All right, so <laughs> next item. And as a matter of fact, the last item. Well, no, not the last item for the week. We still got to do our geek wisdom. Don't let me forget to do the geek wisdom before we quit, okay? Okay. All right, just remind me. All right, this... So another picture I have here that I'm not sure you can see on the screen. Let's see if I can get in really close. Those little pinpoint things are all the places in the world that people have been coming to the drbill.tv website. Isn't that cool? 
So I see say here the title of the article is Where in the World? Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Let's play a little bit of that. Because I love this little tune that is the beginning of the Carmen San Diego song. Well, she sneaks around the world from Vienna to Carolina. She's a sticky finger filter from Berlin down to Belize. Take you for a ride on a snowboat in China. Tell me where. I like that. Yes. Carmen San Diego. Anyway. Yes. You're probably thinking, Dr. Bill, you've completely lost it this week. Yes. Okay. Anyway, you've heard of where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Anyway, well, this is more where in the world do they watch the Dr. Bill TV show? Or more to the point, where in the world have they come to check out the website? DrBill.tv. This is the Weebia bar, uh, which is along the bottom of the screen. That's the little bar here at the very bottom of the screen. And uh, <laughs> I hit a button. Didn't mean to. Okay, anyway, right at the very beginning, there's this little, looks like a little guy walking. A little guy in a little circle. If you click that, it will bring up a screen and it will show you all the places around the world where people have come to the website from their locations. Isn't that awesome? And I really appreciate it. All of those people around the world watching Dr. Bill. Boy, you guys are bored, aren't you? Anyway, I got this for Easter. You know how you get chocolate bunnies for Easter? Well, I got a chocolate bunny. I ate it. <laughs> the bunny is all gone because I ate it. That's eight for those of you that don't understand Southern. Okay, so I did have a bunny. Yes. But this is also, this is one of those think geek things. This, as it says on the side of the box, is Han Solo and Carbonite. <laughs> It truly is Han Solo and Carbonite, made out of chocolate. Now, it's very dark chocolate. It says here on the back, experience the rich dark chocolate bounty of the Han Solo and Carbonite chocolate bar. Delicious at room temperature or straight out of the freezer. It's a perfect reward after a long day. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, anyway, it's a Star Wars Han Solo and Carbonite chocolate bar. The thing is, it says rich dark chocolate. It is dark chocolate. It's not like a really super sweet chocolate. So if, you, if you're not into dark chocolate, it's kind of like, mm, okay. So I'll, I'll show you what I did. I got one and the Game Master got one. Because my wife is very geeky and, and likes to give us geeky stuff. And I've had many people tell me, man, it must be awesome having a wife that's geeky. It really is, I'm telling you. Let me go in here. Boy, this is well wrapped. Here's what I did. I ate one corner of Han Solo's foot. <laughs> that sounds wrong on so many levels. So, but I will eat the rest of it slowly. Because... Dark chocolate is just not as yummy as, like, Hershey's sweet chocolate. That's just preference, you know what I'm saying? Okay, this... <laughs> Boy, I'm really running over time, but that's okay. We're, we're doing cool stuff. This is Geek Wisdom. Now, last week's Geek Wisdom was, eh, not my cup of tea. But this week, this week's Geek's Wisdom is awesome because it comes from firefly and i love firefly yes i like flying through the verse going to the black those are all fly firefly terms this is a quote from river tam a character on firefly who was a very strange individual she said I can kill you with my brain. 
Yes. And here's the write-up in the, in the Geek Wisdom thing. Geekdom is a celebration of the mind. There are lots of athletic or physically attractive geeks out there, but in the end, the geek identity is centered around the intellect and the willingness to be different. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Unfortunately, these qualities are not much celebrated in wider society. True. So how cool is it? They even, that guy even writes like I talk. It's because I'm such a geek. So how cool is it that so much of geek literature, science fiction and fantasy, in other words, there are people who can kick rear end. That's not what he says, but I'm cleaning it up. With brain and willpower. The enduring popularity of the psychic or psionic in the geek zeitgeist is ultimately about the power of the mind and its relative worth in society. The heroes and heroines of these tales often fear their power or struggle to control it, but once they've mastered it, no force in the verse can stop them. <laughs> I love it. Now for the fine print. I should really bring my glasses. Firefly from 2002 may not have lasted more than 14 episodes, but a decade later its star Nathan Fillion could still be found dropping in jokes in his new TV show, Castle. Yes indeed, he occasionally will make comments in Castle about his role as uh, Mal Reynolds, the captain of the Firefly, and he even dressed as Mal one time for Halloween and they said, what is this? You're dressed as a space cowboy again? <laughs> Dude, you got to love that, okay? So we've had geek wisdom. We've had weird, stupid user trick jokes. We've had the Raspberry Pi little bitty card. I mean, we've had geekery out the wazoo. I really don't want to know what a wazoo is. <laughs> so... Remember, until next time, the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.